Hello everyone and thank you for coming at this uh, new live seminar. Today we have Dr. Sophia Wari with us. Uh, so Dr. Sophia Wari has done a list and in fact a few on the, the teeth of rats uh, and uh, then she's in a postdoctoral at the ENSIGN. And nowadays she's in medical course at the University of Paris 7. And uh, she's also a dentist surgeon at, at the Paris hospitals. And our research focuses mainly on the bimineralization of enamels uh, with rats as a model. So thank you very much for being with us today. And, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for indeed inviting me. So uh, I'm uh, Sophia Wari. I'm a dental surgeon and I did a PhD in biological uh, sciences. And uh, today I'm going to, to speak about uh, dental enamel and uh, how uh, multi-scale uh, enamel analysis can distinguish two pathologies called molar incisor hypomineralization. And the second one is dental fluorosis defects. Just to start with, uh, at the, top, at the top left, you have uh, the biological aspect of enamel synthesis. Uh, you can see ameloblast cells. These cells are very uh, specialized in synthesizing enamel matrix first, and then this enamel matrix mineralize in the second step called maturation of enamel. So uh, enamel uh, are formed uh, by a lot of uh, crystals and these crystals are organized into rods, also, ro also called prisms that extend from the dentin enamel junction almost to the tooth surface. And in between each, Prisms, uh, we can find interrod enamel located between adjacent rods. And the particular thing is that we have a differing crystal orientation between prisms and inter interrod structure. Uh, uh, something else is uh, you can find around uh, each uh, prism a rod sheath with slightly greater matrix protein content. Uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this periphery. And what about the composition of healthy enamel uh, by weight? We, can, we have 96% uh, of mineral, and the rest is uh, between organic phase and water phase. But uh, just, to, just to take into account, uh, by volume, uh, the mineral uh, concern 87%, and the rest is uh, Eleven percent of water and only two percent of protein, uh, uh, meaning uh, an, a mature enamel. And what about the two pathologies that I'm going to talk about? The first one uh, is called MIH, meaning molar incisor hypomineralization. Uh, this pathology uh, is, uh, is clinically uh, diagnosed, di diagnosed by well demarcated creamy white to brown lesions, uh, specifically on a permanent incisor and permanent first molar. The prevalence of this pathology is, uh, is uh, relevant because around 15% of uh, children are affected around the world. The problem with this pathology uh, is the multifactorial aspect of, of its etiology. 
uh, in fact, we have um, uh, a selective window of sensitivity around the perinatal period. It's that's why only this type of tooth are affected and not canine or premolar, for example. And a lot of environmental factors uh, are uh, involved in this pathology, such as uh, the childhood illness, the, the antibiotics uh, taking, uh, the premature birth or the, a lot of medical problems during pregnancy of the woman. And uh, also we have some uh, genetic predictability of this disease, but this genetic um, predictability is not the main factor. Clearly the environmental factor uh, uh, are well characterized in this pathology. And what about uh, the enamel ultra, ultra structure of this pathology? A uh, lot of publication uh, are already published uh, starting in the uh, 80, uh, starting in the 20th century, because this pathology uh, are in fact defined in the 20th century by Virgin and collaborator in Netherlands. So what about uh, the composition of this MIH lesion, uh, which is hypomineralized, is in fact a higher content of protein coming from body fluid. So all the serum proteins are, are involved in this MIH lesion. As you can see here, uh, proteomic analysis uh, reveals uh, um, specifically the, the presence of albumin protein in this type of lesions. And as you can see in the picture, uh, in fact, in uh, one affected tooth, we have uh, some part of healthy enamel and uh, some, somewhere in the enamel, we have the body of the lesion, as you can see in, in, with the black asterisk. Uh, the body of the lesions in this pathology uh, start in the, uh, in the inner layer of enamel, so near the dentin enamel junction and not from the surface. So in this pathology, of course, the mineral, the mineral, the mineral, the mineral phase is decreased and the organic ones and also the water is increased. Uh, other studies show uh, uh, defectuous prisons. And here, for example, uh, this uh, scanning electron microscopy uh, image shows that hypomineralized enamel have less distant enamel prisms. And in addition, uh, enamel prisms in this pathology are, uh, for the majority of them, covered by a structureless organic layer. So this is also in the inner and in, in mainly in the inner layer of enamel. At nanoscale, uh, you can see the sheath uh, structure around the prism uh, is electron dense. Uh, physiolog physiologically, we have this sheath, pre sheath structure, but in this pathology, this sheath structure is uh, more electron dense. So meaning that somewhere in this sheath, we have 
the organic content. And what about the mechanical properties of this MIH uh, lesions? Uh, you can see here uh, um, uh, nano hardness uh, graphic uh, with, uh, associated with the content of calcium. And you can see uh, in the, the, blue, the blue line uh, showing the hypomineralized enamel. Uh, and you can see here that we have a huge decrease of enamel property of mechanical properties depending on the disc considered. And uh, EDJ uh, means enamel dentil junction. So clearly we have uh, uh, the major impact in the deeper uh, layer of enamel. The, the, the second uh, enamel pathology that we are going to talk about is called dental fluorosis. It's completely different uh, in, uh, in one manner uh, comparing to MIH because dental fluorosis is very uh, is well known to be caused by an excess of fluoride during the mineralization of the teeth. Uh, uh, clinically, we have some classification uh, to uh, to distinguish uh, the severity of the disease. So we have mild to moderate form and we have severe form. Uh, uh, optically, the, the mild and moderate form are characterized by opaque white areas, whereas the severe form are characterized by colorite areas. So it depends on the, 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 the duration of exposure to fluoride. It depends on the dose of fluoride, but also it depends on the, some genetic background of the, of the population because we have uh, clearly some uh, areas around the world where dental fluorosis is uh, like a pandemic uh, because these areas uh, uh, don't control the amount of fluoride in the public water and, uh, and so on. Uh, what about the ultra ultrastructure of this uh, enamel? So we have uh, a lot of data from the literature for example, mean and collaborator in 2018 showed that dental fluorosis lesions uh, uh, in comparison with MIH, uh, this uh, pathology does not uh, disturb the, the organization of prisms and uh, does not concern a lot of organic matter <coughs> Uh, so in this pathology, we have uh, the well-ordered uh, prisms. So the, the ultra structure is not uh, clearly modified, but in some region and uh, specifically in the outer layer and not in the inner layer, uh, comparing with MIGH, this pathology affects uh, mainly the outer layer. And depending on the severity, the middle layer can be affected. But uh, uh, the major uh, observation is uh, 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 unlike the prisms that are maintained, we have uh, we have some prism uh, more, uh, more thick, so more large, if we compare healthy enamel and dental fluorosis. And some of rod 
can be de defective with some missing minerals uh, inside uh, the crystal and inside the prism. And what about the mechanical properties? As you can see here, uh, clearly the outer layer uh, is impacted, uh, whereas the inner layer uh, remain normal. And uh, if we consider uh, the severe form of dental fluorosis, then the, mid the middle layer of enamel uh, will be affected also. Uh, here, just a, a recent a publication in 2020 uh, showing uh, uh, a comparison of proteins content depending on uh, two conditions. So you can see uh, MIH, fluorosis, and another one called uh, AI. Uh, it's AI is, uh, is amelogenesis imperfecta, and amelogenesis imperfecta is, uh, uh, is uh, well known to be the uh, genetic pathology of enamel. And here you can see clearly that MIH condition uh, involves the majority of proteins content in comparison with a dental fluorosis. And these matrix proteins uh, mainly uh, at, are adsorbed to the enamel crystals. And for example, in this sheath uh, of uh, prisms. So uh, to summarize the background of our study, uh, based on these developmental defects of enamel, this called DDE, uh, it's in fact uh, concerned MIH and dental fluorosis. Uh, these pathologies are uh, a real public health problems. And uh, of course, they are supposed to be related to specific early childhood exposure to environmental toxicant. Uh, but this pathology required uh, to be uh, deeper characterized. So that's why our the objectives of our study uh, was to compare uh, this pathology uh, by analyzing uh, their microstructure uh, their nanochemistry, their composition. Uh, uh, so we did a systematical comparison between these two pathologies and uh, healthy enamel. And we used uh, some advanced techniques uh, at, multi at multiple length scale. So the first uh, observation of our study uh, is uh, concerns the optical properties. And uh, we don't just uh, characterize uh, the, these pathologies by, by classification, but we also used uh, a clinical spec spectrophotometer to quantify the color parameters of this pathology. So the color parameters are defined by three uh, coordinates, uh, the L, uh, the A, and the B. The L is the luminosity. Uh, the A is the variation of the color between green and red. And B is the variation of color between blue, blue and yellow. And uh, here uh, you can see uh, uh, a central cluster uh, uh, with in gray the healthy enamel. So it's a classical cluster where the color of our teeth are. 
and the, 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 the principal finding of this clinical study uh, was the, the differential distribution of this uh, color parameter depending on the pathology and depending on the severity of the pathology. In the yellow uh, small cluster correspond to moderate fluorosis, so white lesion caused by dental fluorosis. And in a red a small cluster, you have the same pathology, but, the, but at its severe form. And in the middle, uh, just close to healthy enamel, you have in blue MIH moderate form and in green MIH severe form. And you can see in this spectrogram that MIH pathology is a little bit confusing with the normal color, whereas uh, dental fluorosis color uh, as located at the periphery of the big cluster are, could be well defined or well, well diagnosed by this means uh, clinically. Uh, the second point uh, that we uh, that we performed uh, and we uh, confirmed uh, the literature data uh, concerns the mechanical property and uh, you can see here on the left the dental fluorosis and on the right MIH and you you can clearly see that in dental fluorosis, uh, the nano hardness was reduced homo homogeneously in all uh, regions, depending on the, on the distance from the dental enamel ju junction to the, surf the, the, sur the top surface. So indeed, uh, in this pathology, we have clearly, you can see here uh, in the, the red line comparing with healthy enamel in black, that we have in fact, not only the outer layer impacted, but all the region. And uh, on the right, you can see that MIH uh, lesion are a little bit uh, complicated uh, it's not homogeneous. Clearly, we confirm that inner enamel and middle enamel are the most impacted, uh, but not or, or not uh, at the same level. The outer enamel, uh, depending on the severity, is not very well impacted. Uh, uh, just a point, uh, just an important point uh, concerning the literature. Uh, this publication uh, show, uh, mentioned clearly that the mechanical properties of enamel uh, depends first on the location, so on the deep location, but also on the chemical composition and also depending on the prism's orientation. So we have a lot of factor impacting, impacting uh, these mechanical uh, properties. Uh, then we, fo we, we follow our study by uh, analyzing uh, the, the, at the atomic scale level, the X-ray microdiffraction. So we performed this experiment uh, uh, on powder uh, enamel. So we we powderize uh, 
some some fragment of enamel of this patient because we have the all the uh, all the authorization to do that. So we uh, before before treating this patient, um, in the majority of cases we need to remove mechanically some. Uh, some uh, a part of the totality of the lesion, so we can uh, collect it, the enamel, and for this technique, we reduce the fragment to powder. And, uh, you can see here the difference uh, between uh, MIH and fluorosis uh, in terms of uh, the maintain of crystalline structure. And you can see uh, here that dental fluorosis, uh, in comparison with MIH, have the better crystalline structure maintained. Whereas in MIH lesion, we have, uh, as you can see, some peak missing, and as you can see, some a lot of uh, peak background. Uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, how do we say? Uh, uh, a lot of small peaks that hiden uh, the crystalline or bright, bright peaks. So clearly, in MIH lesion, we have a mixture of crystalline, but also and of important some amorphous domain that that was observed. And this suggests that we have in MIH uh, lesion a progressive uh, disorganization of the crystalline phase that we don't have in dental fluorosis lesions. Uh, then we continue with uh, our uh, exploration. Uh, with uh, a collaboration with Etienne Ballant and uh, Julie Offor uh, in Sorbonne University. And uh, we uh, analyzed the molecular organization by uh, uh, infrared spectroscopy. And here uh, we have, uh, we had the possibility to compare MIH and dental fluorosis, and the main finding uh, of this technique uh, is the presence of uh, amid uh, bonds, uh, specifically uh, in severe form of MIH, which was not found in dental fluorosis, whatever the severity of the dental fluorosis. So clearly here, we have a, a difference uh, between the two pathology in terms of uh, in term of organizational uh, 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 composition. Uh, then, uh, thanks to uh, all, another collaboration uh, in Orléans. Uh, in the lab, uh, in a, a platform called Cyclotron, uh, we performed uh, two nuclear techniques. The first one uh, is called PIX, uh, is used uh, uh, X-ray uh, emission uh, to see uh, if we have uh, some gradient of, for example, truss metals in our pathology. And first, we observe uh, that the, the element zinc uh, was clearly impacted uh, in MIH uh, pathology. And you can see here that we have, comparing to healthy <coughs> enamel in black, we have a huge increase of zinc, uh, and this technique was performed uh, on the surface of our enamel fragment. So it's not uh, 
body uh, uh, comparison technique, but it, the, this technique is based on what type of element we have on the surface of uh, the lesion. So clearly the zinc is increased in MIH lesion. The second uh, truss, truss metals that we found uh, is iron. And clearly here again, uh, we have an increase of iron in MIH pathology. And uh, what about uh, the dental fluorosis? Uh, the, the distribution is, is different, but we have uh, also in this pathology an increase of zinc, but not at the same level uh, to the MIH. And concerning uh, iron, we have iron, uh, a lot, uh, an increase of iron, but specifically in severe form of dental fluorosis, not in, in the white spot of dental fluorosis. And the literature uh, uh, mentioned clearly that this trace element can really influence the physical properties of tooth enema. The next uh, nuclear technique that we performed in this, uh, in this uh, cyclotron uh, is called PIG, is based on gamma emission. Is, it's also uh, performed on the enamel surface of the lesion, comparing with healthy uh, area. Uh, uh, thanks to the gamma emission, we can um, quantify light elements, uh, typically like uh, fluoride, because fluorine is, is a very light element, so it's, uh, is, uh, is somehow so difficult to quantify. But thanks to these techniques, we, uh, we, find, uh, we found the issue. And uh, interestingly, we found uh, that fluoride uh, was present and not at a small amount in MIH lesion. So clearly MIH, it's not due to an accumulation of fluoride, but at the end, uh, we found a high level of fluoride uh, in the surface of MIH lesion uh, at the same level uh, of, for example, dental fluorosis. And we clearly don't find, uh, don't found, sorry, uh, um, a difference uh, in fluoride amount between moderate and severe form of MIH, but uh, as uh, as we uh, uh, as we attend, we have clearly uh, an augmentation of fluoride amount between moderate and severe form of dental fluorosis. So we. Uh, we comfort that clearly the severity of dental fluorosis uh, is, is, uh, is, is depending on the fluoride amount on the surface. Uh, on the right panel, uh, you can see the phosphorus amount uh, and uh, whatever the, the pathology, the phosphorus was not uh, modulated. And also sodium uh, was a little bit modulated, but clearly not significantly. Uh, then uh, we, um, we wanted to show um, the chemical composition of the entire thickness of the lesion. So for that, we uh, dissolve uh, pieces of enamel into acid to have the global 
a composition. And uh, this, uh, this was uh, done by ICP uh, techniques, uh, OES or MS uh, uh, distinction. And here uh, you can see ICP OES uh, data. Uh, first, on the right, you can see that even we have uh, in front of hypomineralized pathology, the well-known calcium phosphorus ratio uh, did not vary that much because it's, it's less, but it's not clearly significant. And uh, if you take a look of the le left panel, uh, you can see that for example, calcium was clearly decreased, whatever the pathology. Phosphorus doesn't vary. But we have clearly a reduction of sodium. And uh, concerning the magnesium, um, sometimes the variation was not significant. And sometimes, uh, for example, in moderate form of dental fluorosis, we have uh, one star of uh, significant uh, modulation and particularly a decrease of magnesium in this form of dental fluorosis. So the, the major or the minor element of the hepatite structure uh, was not the, the main purpose of the, the pathology. And uh, if we take a look of the trace element, here we found uh, again uh, that we clearly uh, modify the composition of trace element in this pathology. As you can see here, concerning the, uh, the whole the, the lesion. Uh, concerning iron, you can see here that in severe form of MIH, we have an increase of iron, but clearly in severe form of dental fluorosis, the, the amount of iron was uh, the highest of, of all. And concerning the zinc element, uh, so the second bars, uh, we have um, uh, in comparison uh, with the surface composition, if we, if we consider all the lesion, we have a decrease of zinc and not an increase of zinc if we consider the whole lesion. So we have here a clear um, difference uh, considering the surface of the lesion and the whole lesion. We show here uh, that also strontium vary a little bit. Uh, it's, it's decreased, but sometimes it's not significant. But clearly, uh, we don't have an increase of strontium. It's, the tense is uh, at the decrease. And uh, finally, uh, thanks to uh, short mobility that I did uh, three years ago in Northwestern University in uh, Chicago, uh, uh, we used uh, an advanced technique to see the distribution of uh, atoms at the nanoscale level. This technique, uh, it's called atom probe tomography. Uh, and uh, the recent literature uh, from uh, the, the group of Dirk Joster. So Dirk Joster is a PI of um, 
of the north of the this lab in Northwestern University, focusing of material sciences and engineering. So uh, last year, uh, publishing in Nature, uh, the group uh, clearly mentioned that exist a chemical gradients uh, in human enamel crystallites. So it's at, clearly at nanoscale. Uh, we, we talk about crystallite, so the smaller unity of enamel around 70 to 90 nanometer. So for example, prisms are composed of a uh, billion of crystallites, just to, to remember it. And thanks to this technique, uh, we can see uh, some um, uh, distribution. And just to for your uh, comprehension, uh, these uh, panels are in fact uh, um, the, the a scheme uh, of what what are what are going on uh, concerning the distribution of atoms inside or in the periphery of the crystallite. So uh, clearly, we can see on the middle of each crystallite a zone called uh, the core. And around, you have a sheath of this crystallite. And as you can see, as you can see here, well mentioned uh, concerning fluoride uh, element, you can see that fluoride is accumulated in this zone around crystallite. This zone is called intergranular, intergranular phases. So, Ig is intergranular phases. So this is healthy enamel. And what we observed uh, in our pathology, uh, first uh, focusing on dental fluorosis, you can see that these intergranular phases uh, is not well defined. Uh, uh, as you can see uh, in healthy enamel, but in fact, in, in dental fluorosis, we have some accumulation of this element, and for example, magnesium, sodium, fluoride, not in this intergranular phases, but in the core of the crystal. So clearly, this pathology affects uh, the initial chemistry of the of the initiation of the crystal and it, it's not just a trace element that absorb on the periphery and uh, I did it again and uh, concerning MIH uh, here again uh, we can see that sodium, magnesium, fluoride accumulate in this core of crystallite and not in the intergranular phases. Uh, to conclude our study, uh, first, uh, the comparisons uh, between MIH and dental fluorosis uh, yielded both similarities and differences in tissue uh, heterogeneity, uh, highlighted chemical, structural, and mechanical specificities underlying this pathology. And clearly, our data pointed out that not only the organic matter is involved in these hypomineralized defects, but also, and of importance, the quantity and the quality, the type of trace metal or inorganic element play a major role in this, in 
both pathology. Uh, uh, based on atomic uh, technique, uh, we clearly show that we have a correlation between the presence of fluoride in one side and zinc and iron in both pathology. And uh, the, the trends is to, to think that we have uh, areas where fluoride is concentrated, uh, then uh, in this area where fluoride is concentrated, uh, we have the more iron and the more zinc present. So we have a clear uh, correlation between fluoride, iron, and zinc in not only one pathology, but in the two pathology. And interestingly, because we don't attempt that MIH uh, uh, will, will develop this, uh, the same element uh, that dental fluorosis. Uh, at the end, all this characterization uh, will help us to better understand uh, the pathophysiology of this disease. And uh, because in our group, uh, we study a lot fluoride, but in, mo in animal models. And uh, um, in 2019, uh, our group published that uh, in animal models, fluoride impact the iron metabolism of ameloblast cells. So all that to, in fact, improve uh, the diagnosis of our patient, because it's important to take uh, into account that uh, uh, in clinic, we, we usually do a global diagnosis, but in fact, when we focused on one tooth and in one lesion, uh, it's a little bit different. And sometimes we have some characteristics of both pathology. Um, and sometimes it could be a confusing, um, a confusing uh, factor uh, because uh, in one tooth we can have um, some characteristic of each pathology associated with another. So clearly, uh, the human population, as you can uh, you you know, uh, are uh, exposed to a mixture of environmental factor. Then uh, the precise um, uh, chemical or ultrastructural diagnosis is very important. And uh, furthermore, um, as we can um, um, uh, detect some chemical signature, we can then adapt um, a personalized treatment because uh, nowadays, we have just one treatment. Uh, of course, it works, but sometimes it takes a lot of time uh, to treat this patient. Uh, and the last important thing, it's, it's important to do a distinction between the pathological enamel surface and the whole uh, lesion. Because, because uh, as we can see, uh, we have a differences. Uh, so all these things, it's to improve uh, at the end uh, the dental care of our patient. And uh, nowadays, uh, the dentistry is focused on minimally invasive dentistry. So clearly, all the chemical uh, agents that we can improve to, to, uh, 
to uh, to improve the quality of enamel of this patient to improve the aesthetic uh, aspect of this pathology without using some drilling instrument uh, will be uh, clearly the future of uh, the the dentistry so thank you for your attention and uh, at the end, I just uh, wanted to, to acknowledge my collaborator, uh, particularly Dirk Joster uh, and uh, Thierry Sauvage uh, in Orléans, uh, Etienne Ballon and uh, Julie Ophor uh, for spectroscopies uh, uh, analysis, and uh, Elsa Vena from the Ecole Centrale Paris for the nano uh, mechanical uh, aspect of uh, these pathologies. Thank you very much. So if you uh, have so some you questions. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think that Francois has a question. So maybe Francois, you yeah. can. Uh... Oui. Again? Yeah, thank, thank you very much for the, for the talk. Um, uh, I was just wondering at uh, you mentioned uh, I, I don't know anything about uh, about these these pathologies and uh, you were mentioning there is one treatment that works. Mm -hmm. What is the basis of that treatment? It's based off uh, acid erosion and then uh, uh, a dehydrating process using alcohol and then uh, infiltrating of the the rest of the lesion by a resin, uh, a resin uh, that have some optical property uh, uh, rapprochement the index of refraction of enamel. Okay, I see. Sometimes we use a cycle of uh, deproteinization by uh, hydrochloride sodium uh, to remove the organic matter but okay. uh, when we are in front of colored region clearly it takes uh, two hours uh, because uh, clearly we don't have uh, some chemical agent to oxidize uh, the metal uh, element so uh, some expert uh, in this uh, uh, pathology treatment used before some uh, whitening uh, procedure to, to change the colored lesion to a black lesion, uh, to a white lesion, sorry, uh, to, to avoid, uh, to, avoid uh, to spend a lot of time in clinic, but uh, I don't know if you already heard about, but uh, whitening process, uh, the, uh, the uh, legally uh, 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 should be or must be done by uh, the patient himself. So it takes uh, at least uh, two months or three months to 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 white the colored lesions. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, I think I have a question first. Oui, bonjour, Karim. Ah, yeah. uh, thanks. Uh, about the the atom atom probe uh, tomography. Mm -hmm. uh, so you show that uh, there is a distribution of the chemical elements that is uh, different. Uh, have you so where do the few crystallites that you have uh, probed where where are they are, are they from the surface of the enamel or deep inside and have you compared the the spatial distributions between those different parts of the enamel? Uh, we con yeah uh, we compare uh, a zone from the outer enamel and we compare a zone from inner enamel. Uh, but in terms of uh, the 1D uh, tomography, we don't find a clear difference between outer and inner. Okay, and so so I mean, in both cases, you you have uh, more fluor mm. uh, at the core of the crystallites, right? Uh, 
Yeah, right. But uh, concerning fluoride, you're right. Uh, at the outer layer, we found uh, the picture are representative of the outer layer because clearly uh, fluoride uh, 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 accumulate uh, more easily on the outer layer than in inner layer. And clearly in MIH lesions, we don't found uh, fluoride in deeper, uh, but only on the outer or in or middle uh, layer of enamel. Okay, thank you. So I think we have questions. Mm -hmm. um, how does the water Measure the nano hardness at the crystallite crystallite phase uh, uh, scale. Sorry, because the nano hardness uh, was done from the top to the inner uh, to the dentin uh, enamel junction. But between two indent, uh, we have something like uh, thirty micro. So it's called nano hardness, but in fact, uh, it's, uh, yeah. But the diff, the, probably it's due to uh, the diff of the indent that because uh, each indent uh, in diff, it's concerned something like one micron. So I don't have a correlation between nano and nano mechanic and uh, uh, chemical uh, uh, distribution. Yeah. But in your like, I don't know much about this field. So I guess in your uh, view, uh, do you think the difference, the distribution of how the elements are, like I don't know, even from the ICP, which is more on the bulk bulk scale, mm -hmm. that will impact how the, uh, the physical, like the more mechanical properties will be impacted or it will be something completely um, different? Uh, after a discussion with other collaboration, uh, in fact, the, the mechanical uh, property uh, is uh, mainly based on some ultra structure and some porosities of the enamel, not on the chemical. Uh, composition. Uh, for us, the chemical composition uh, play a role in the optical uh, differences between color. And the, the question is, uh, because uh, we well know that when we um, go um, uh, uh, on the, when we, when we follow the, the severity of the pathology, then in severe form, we have this colored lesion and not in mild form. So clearly we have a correlation between um, the porosity, the trace element uh, uh, involved in this porosity mm -hmm. uh, and the quality of enamel, clearly. And just uh, to, to be sure that you understand well that this trace element, as we found them in the deep um, uh, layer, because enamel is completely formed uh, before the tooth uh, uh, do the eruption. So clearly on the deeper, we don't have some other um, um, pollutant 
from the saliva or from, from the food or from the diet. So clearly and, and particularly thanks to atom probe tomography, uh, clearly these, these impurities are present in the core of crystallites. So clearly this, this uh, part should be the more uh, preserved. Uh, so clearly we have a dysfunction, dysfunctionality of ameloblast during the amelogenesis process. And uh, after, depending on the, on the severity of the disease, we have some other elements impacting the surface. So for example, clearly the zinc could be higher at the surface, maybe due to the environmental diet or water or so on. But clearly on the whole lesion, uh, we found, for example, iron that, that could not be uh, from uh, uh, or uh, from oral fluid or so on and so on. But clearly when the crystal form. Um, yes, um, thank you. Yeah, uh, actually it's, it's uh, related to that point. Um, uh, okay, you mentioned that uh, in, in MO, even in the deep structure, there is a few percent of proteins, right? There are a few percent of proteins. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, that in the in at least one of the pathologies, the percentage of protein is, uh, is changing. Uh, my my question was: Do you image really these proteins? Do you know where where what is their positions with respect to the crystals? And and the other question is: When when you do, for instance, ICP uh, analysis or things like that, uh, do you extract? The organic matter first, and uh, be, no. because one one uh, one parameter, uh, if you if you look at environmental studies, for instance, especially for iron and zinc, uh, well, these materials they might be also complexed uh, somewhat to um, to the so, peptides, right? To the to the to, to the proteins, and uh, and so it would be uh, my, my my question. Is rather is is this uh, partitioning between the two phases uh, responsible for some of what you see? Yeah, could be, but uh, uh, in fact we don't perform this type of distinction. But of course, the the, the perspective uh, and, uh, and uh, clearly would I would like to 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 go deeper in some um, in some types of lesion. And clearly, I would like to see uh, the, the, the link uh, between organic matter and metals, uh, metals, uh, metals uh, atoms. Yeah, but, but I suppose from, from the study you showed, uh, the, the, there are some people have localized the proteins, right? Uh, they, are, they, are, they are what? They are at the surface of the crystals. They are. Uh, no. They are in the, in the grain boundaries, uh, where, in the porosity, where, where are they? Uh, uh, the literature don't have this type of uh, data, clearly. Okay, that's interesting. Because at, at, it was interesting, at some point you, you showed a graph where in the moderate uh, MIH uh, you had more iron and zinc than in severe MIH. So it was a kind of a reverse uh, behavior. So it's uh, it looks like there are some variations in these uh, proteins versus minerals, um, and the, and and of course the reproducibility of, uh, for instance, I, I one would have, one would ask, uh, of course, uh, is it uh, true for any severe MIH, for instance, that we have that. Uh, enrichment, or is it is it really uh, on all 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 cases, or only a few cases? Or uh, uh, clearly, uh, we need other experiments. But uh, in this study, I used uh, something like uh, seven different patients. Okay. And uh, to to not uh, introduce some bias. I also measure in the same tooth uh, 
a healthy, a moderate, and a severe form. Because in MIH, uh, we don't have, in fact, uh, a severe lesion. We mm. have something like a, a progression. So clearly, in MIH teeth, we have healthy enamel. Mm. And we have uh, 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 basically, uh, on the periphery, on the lesion, we have mild to moderate form. And in the center of the lesion, we have severe form. And then, um, um, uh, globally, the, the, we, we use the, the most severe form to call, it, oh, oh, this patient have a severe form of MIH. But in fact, when we look at one the affected tooth, you have uh, the, 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 pan, the, the, the gradient of the severity. And sometimes uh, some characteristic of dental fluorosis is mixed with uh, clinical characteristic of MIH. OK. But clearly, when I, uh, <laughs> when I uh, collected the teeth, uh, I, I, um, say, uh, I, uh, uh, comment dit faire particulièrement attention? Yeah, you, you paid attention to yeah, the, I yeah. To, to, yeah. To, to, to select the yeah. real MIH form and not a mixing one or, and uh, uh, all the experiments was performed using three biological samples at least. But uh, no, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, MIH is, is clearly a uh, uh, big heterogeneous disease. So clearly mm. in MIH, I can't affirm that uh, in all uh, moderate no. or all severe form we have this, but... Uh, uh, no, no, I understand this. I understand this. But my, my question was really at the then the common thing is always this increase in protein content. Yeah, yeah. And this and this you check it. You you, you have a way to check it and to analyze the the, mm -hmm. the protein content and uh, because it's yeah it's it's really the common thing and uh, mm -hmm. it would be interesting to localize this. Uh, yeah, precisely. Or about... Animalous proteins and see how. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And I was just wondering about something. So, uh, my point was about the two ones that you mentioned that were really abundant uh, albumin, proteins, and amelogenin. Amelogenin, yeah. And do we know what the role of these proteins are? And uh, are they really associated to early stages of development or things like that? Alors, uh, amelogenin is a major uh, enamel matrix protein. So 80% of uh, the matrix enamel in the first uh, part of amelogenesis. So amelogenin is a structural protein uh, uh, doing the prism, the prism structure, the inter uh, interrod structure. Albumin uh, is not uh, is not implicated in amelogenesis process. So clearly, in healthy enamel, we don't have albumin, and clearly in dental fluorosis, we don't have albumin. So albumin is coming from uh, serum or uh, some uh, fluid around the cells during amelogenesis. Uh, and uh, when the tooth uh, do uh, its eruption, then albumin could be in saliva and then accumulate again, but only if we have a severe form of MIH. So that's why um, uh, the brown coloration in MIH is mainly due to the albumin or protein content. But I clearly show that we don't have just 
the organic part, we have also uh, a metal inorganic content because clearly when we use some uh, uh, hydrochloride, uh, no, sorry, some sodium hypochlorite solution to remove the organic matter. In this type of lesion, all the coloration don't disappear. So clearly we have something else. So that's why I agree with Francois and uh, the complex uh, organic inorganic um, should clearly uh, play a role, but at this time, uh, Anyone uh, show this, uh, this, corre this uh, correlation or uh, clear distribution around crystallate of this protein? I just mentioned that um, because it's uh, commonly uh, as, uh, it's commonly um, assumed that in this uh, prism sheath we have this uh, less mineralized uh, region. So of course. So if we have some organic matter, it's the first uh, area to be, to be absorbed. But in fact, it's, it, it was not clearly uh, um, uh, image or was not clearly uh, proved. Perhaps there is some inhibition of the crystallization. Uh, also, because in the... the Indeed, this albumin is well known to be a delayed protein of this mineralization process. And clearly this, uh, this phenomenon occurs during the maturation stage of amylogenesis. So it's completely different with the core of crystallites. So clearly we have two, two features and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's good. Uh, I mean, uh, it needs to be deeper characterized. Okay, so are there any questions in the chat? Maybe uh, I can see. So yeah, uh, I think it's time to to end this uh, seminar. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for attending uh, today. Thank you again.